Today Circuit Trail, uh, a video journal with Dan and Marilyn Gilman and Amy French. Dan and Marilyn will share their stories, songs, and a video journal from their hike of the entire trail. And Alan, who is the founder, chairman, and executive director of the Bay Circuit Alliance, will give us an overview of the history of the trail. Was. 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 <laughs> uh, just a quick note, if you didn't notice already, this presentation is being filmed by Waycam and will be available on their channel and on YouTube, so you might see the back of your head on TV. <laughs> and so I just wanted to say thank you to our presenters for coming out tonight, and please enjoy. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for having us. shine a spotlight on people, groups, and organizations that are doing positive things for the environment. Tonight, Dan will be showing some videos of his hike of the Bay Circuit Trail and talking about his experiences in connection with the environment. And Alan French, as Courtney mentioned, was a founder and was the executive director of the Bay Circuit Alliance from 1992 to 2012. And he's going to be He's been involved with the trail for well over 25 years, and he's going to be talking about his experiences and giving us a brief history of the Bay Circuit Trail. Dan writes and performs his own original music for all of our videos, and we'd like to start tonight's presentation with a song he wrote especially for the Bay Circuit Trail. It's called Trail Town. Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> I've been hiking all day out on the trail. I'm pretty tired, but I'm inspired. I've been seeing the sights, earthly delights, and it's all right. Now the time comes around, and I found Trail Town. The people are friendly. They're glad to see me. I think I'll stay right here in this cool breeze. Enjoying a tasty freeze on an outdoor patio. No, I won't get this to go. I think I'll stay for a while in this trail town. On the Bay Circuit Trail, there's a trail town. The spell is cast in Wayland Mass. A trail town. Yeah. Circuit Trail. And the Bay Circuit Trail is our gateway back to nature, right here in our own backyards. We have a map of the entire Bay Circuit Trail. I started in the north at Plum Island. This is Ipswich Bay over here, and it, it's an incomplete part of the trail. And as you go around to the south, you'll see an outer trail with a couple of gaps. This inner trail has a green dotted line because that's not finished yet. And you'll see that there's a few other gaps along the trail. And when I got down to the south, there were two ways to go into Ipswich Bay. So let me tell you why I hiked the Bay Circuit Trail. Nine years ago, we started our website, e-awakening.com. Seven years ago, I quit my job as a TV news cameraman. And that's when Marilyn came up to me and she said, I've always wanted to hike the Appalachian Trail. This is your opportunity. And if you hike the New England section, I'll be your support person. In 2000, well, um, six years ago, we completed a one-hour documentary called The Mountain Song, and that was about the hike of the New England section of the Appalachian Trail. Six years ago, we produced, I um, mean, excuse me. In 2013, we were thinking, what could we do that's different? And 
I was reading in an AMC magazine that the Bay Circuit Trail is within reach of millions of people right in their own backyard. And it was at the same time that I was reading this book here, Blessed Unrest, by Paul Hawken. It's about the biggest movement ever, and no one saw it coming, the environmental movement. So I thought, why not make my hike of the Bay Circuit Trail a search for environmental heroes? I hiked 22 separate days, about 10 miles a day, and then Marilyn and I produced 22 separate segments of the Bay Circuit Trail. Let's join the adventure crew on the Bay Circuit Trail. Come on along and help me sing this song where the adventure grew. Join the adventure crew for over 200 miles of the Bay Circuit Trail in Massachusetts. One end starts at Plum Island and the other on the shore of Kingston Bay. The Bay Circuit Trail arcs around Boston, going through 37 communities. Follow the white blazes up hills, through wetlands, and across eskers. There's a nice, interesting old trail on the other side of this valley. It's a network of people saving open space, protecting the land, and preserving its beauty for future generations. And after over a century of work, everything is coming together. It's time to take a hike and enjoy this environmental wonder. The Bay Circuit Trail is fun, it's educational, and it's now. Check out the Bay Circuit Alliance website, baycircuit.org. And see all the segments of e-awakening.com series featuring the Bay Circuit Trail. Cause we're all connected by the trail Closer to nature, hill and day Cause we're the adventure crew That's me and you And the whole world too A wide trail and open forest greet me for this beautifully cool morning on the Bay Circuit. Amazed to see this creature hovering in front of me like a tiny helicopter, a hoverfly. It's hard to miss this scarlet tanager doing something like a morning dance just above me in the trees. It seems to me it's grooming, its feathers vibrating, a very special moment. Then it's by a dangling leaf to a bog, a swampy area, a concert of birds singing, frogs croaking, nature at its finest, glorious bright blue skies and the sun. Today is very special because of meeting with a man that I've heard so much about. If it weren't for Alan French, there wouldn't be a Bay yeah. Circuit Trail. He's a hard guy to say no to. <laughs> <laughs> but who is this man walking through the wetlands with a shopping bag in hand? 
And what got him started on reviving the dream of the Bay Circuit Trail? Simply by going to a meeting at the Appalachian Mountain Club's Boston headquarters. He had a store, you know, so he was kind of the, uh, the corporate uh, world. He was representing the corporate world. And, uh, and they were talking about doing a trek. And he, um, uh, he asked them, well, on this trek, do you uh, have any need for an old geezer like me? That's <laughs> how he put it. And what was Al's secret for galvanizing the passions of so many people, waiting for a leader to tie it all together, working at the grassroots? What that really did was it inspired people to get really interested in the Bay Circuit. A lot of people volunteered. And the whole notion that Al came up with, which I think was his genius, was this is a bottoms-up thing. You find people who are interested in every community, and you let them work out their part, and you get them together so the trails meet at the town border. The state was running it sort of as a zoning question, where they would try to get all the towns in the Bay Circuit to do their master planning for buying up land and so forth. The Park Service said, get out there. You'll get the people that will use the land, then they'll vote for it. That's how you drive the program. And it wasn't my idea, but I bought it, hook, line, and sinker. Our next speaker is Al French, who's been involved with the trail since 1929, largely Boston uh, Brahmin uh, visionaries who uh, were active in the Appalachian Mountain Club and conservation groups. First specific proposal, 1937, sponsored by the trustees of public reservations, now the trustees of reservations. What was it? Buy up the farmland in a hundred mile belt outside Boston. Buy it up so that the Boston population, which was expanding, had room to expand and recreate. Sideline, economic depression, world war, until 1956. In 1956, legislation by the state, a 50 town corridor roughly between what today is I-495 and Route 128. It was a state-mandated land use zoning project. But, as often happens, no funding and no serious management scheme until the late 1980s. In the late 80s, in fact, in 1980, almost four million, about three and point eight million dollars in an open space, much larger open space bond organization of hundreds of millions, was earmarked for the project and for the first time specific money and project management by a state agency, which is now DCR, Department of Conservation and Recreation. At that point it was DEM. Uh, several key Land acquisitions were made, and particularly in the video you saw the end, the last, uh, as he walked out into Kingston Bay, that would have gone for development of the beautiful salt marsh. Several million dollars uh, were spent of the uh, money that was appropriated to protect it. And today it's the southern terminus of the Bay Circuit. You'll get there. Uh, also, planning grants. There were 50 towns. Offered three or 
$24,000 to update their planning for the, the paid circuit in one year. 25 of those towns uh, took advantage of it, and I'm pretty sure Wayland was one of them. 1989, the money runs out. That often happens with uh, programs like that. And additional funding that was asked for but rejected by the legislature. So that brings us to 1990 meeting at the Appalachian Mountain Club that was portrayed on the video, uh, and it produced a recommendation, as it said, a recommendation from the Federal Park Service consultants that to manage it as a grassroots situation, bottom up rather than top down. And at that point was really the first time that a trail, a long distance trail, was part of the project. And uh, as, I, as I said, I bought the idea. It wasn't mine. I thought it was a good idea and it seems to have worked out pretty well. Uh, and in 1992, after that first trek in 1990, uh, it was formed the Bay Circuit Alliance Incorporated, a grassroots nonprofit uh, corporation to be the vehicle for creating the trail. Not all new trails, by the way, but there were many trails, but they were often assigned to specific reservations. They didn't connect. And in some cases, there was a need for totally new trails. So, uh, and as I say, the first trek was in 1990. Uh, there were treks almost every year. This was a vehicle used to promote it. Uh, so until today. Uh, today is now after my time ran out, so it's, it's a little longer. But today, about 300 miles, <laughs> give or take. Multi-use recreational trail connecting 35 towns. I don't think that's really uh, uh, 37. We can argue about the number. Mm -hmm. There are there are a few gaps uh, in permanent protection, but the whole trail uh, with all the alternates is very practical now uh, for both day use and through <coughs> hiking. Uh, and now the Bay Circuit Alliance is no longer a grassroots operation. It has permanency as an institution managed by the Appalachian Mountain Club, which is sort of going back, turning the wheel back, because that's where in, in uh, uh, the first meeting it occurred, as it probably was the Appalachian Mountain Club. So that's that's the history. Okay, now that got to be close to under five minutes. Yeah, There's always still, or <laughs> at my age, some of them have passed away. But I usually find people uh, that I've known uh, during this process of creating the trail. And in fact, as I thought about Wayland, uh, I wanted to talk, and it's true, none of the two people I want to mention are, are with us today. Uh, but I do want to bring up some names, hopefully, that some of you from Wayland will recognize. And there are two bills, by the way. And in addition to mentioning their name, I can mention a context, which I like hope to give you an idea of how this trail has been built and how it can be improved and expanded over the years. The specifics of what goes on are all different. The two bills are Bill Jagnabin. Uh, his wife still may be a, well, I don't know that, but I know that Bill passed. Bill Murphy. Now, Bill Jagnabin, when I hear his name, I think of Sedge Meadow. And if you haven't been to Sedge Meadow in Wayland, it's just an iconic place when you feel the impact of Vulcan Space and, and a trail together. With Bill Murphy, there are two contexts. How many of you have been to Trout Brook? Okay, one. One of you have been to Trout Brook. Look it up. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but if it weren't for Bill Murphy, and there's all, he's right near the uh, Nike site, if you know where the former Nike site was. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an, like, another place, and if you haven't been there, you've missed something, and, be, and it wouldn't be there if the trail goes through there now, and if it weren't
weren't for Phil Murphy, who did all the work and planned it and so forth. I also worked on preserving the Nike site, which is also uh, now in the town reservation. It wouldn't, wouldn't really be there. And an additional thing about Phil is he wound up uh, consulting for Andover, where my hometown, and was a, a great force in Andover working for the town conservation service. So there's just, uh, well, I'll just say that here ended the first of 40 attempts by me for the five minute history of the circuit uh, and the Greenway. And uh, so both the circuit is a success, but most of all, the history in five minutes. I've yeah. 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 Al French. 87 years young. You know, uh, it's really hard for me, and I learned personally this, it's been very hard for me to keep up with Al. Uh, he's got so many ideas, so many projects that he's been working on. Uh, but lately, he's been, you know, and he, he's just filling me with so much work and ideas that, that I've been trying to keep up with him. Uh, this is a gateway project he's talking about. He, he got up this idea, you know, hey, there's all these little parcels of land that are getting gobbled up, and how can we save those? I mean, they're, they're too small for the big land uh, trusts, and, you know, there's all these little great little parcels of land that are getting swallowed up, and so is there a way that we might be able to start a grassroots organization to be able to save or help connect people that have knowledge on how the different, uh, you know, success stories have happened, like one of the places we've been working with is Rattlesnake Hill, and that's, knock on wood, looking pretty good right now. So I also want to show you what the day 10 hike was like. I started in Walden, uh, by Walden Pond, and I went by Farrar Pond. And along 126, I had to go along 26 a little bit because of a beaver uh, flood, beaver dam flood. And that's where, you know, somewhere around here, Sedge Meadow. That's where uh, I got lost. <laughs> I was going around Sedge Meadow a couple times, you'll see it in the video. Then I went through Whaling and into the Great, uh, to Pelham Island Road and into the Great Meadow Wildlife Refuge. So what is it I'm doing on the Bay Circuit Trail? What is it I'm trying to preserve and protect? I saw a lot of beauty along the trail and I also felt the restorative healing powers of nature. One of the reasons that I did the hike that Marilyn and I and Al are working on this is because we want to bring attention to our environment and really working to keep our planet healthy. Let's take a hike to Whaling. As we walk down a private driveway, the Bay Circuit passes for our pond where Canadian geese spend some time and a lily pad blooms. We pass through Oxbow Meadows a former Nike missile site. We are in Wayland. We follow roads to a pumping station and search for an elusive trail. Ah, oh, that's where it is. Following a bog walk, we cross over an interesting bridge into the Trout Brook Reservation area. Along some more roads, down Route 126 a ways, and into Sedge Meadow, where I get lost. Circling it twice, till I find this unmarked path that I was hoping was the Bay Circuit Trail. Finally, I find what seems to be a lifeline to me now, a trail marking. Let's take a little break and go back to the Sudbury River where I meet Pat Conaway. We're trying to uh, reawaken people to another way of looking at the earth and healing the earth by uh, doing acts of service. One act of service is an organization Pat Conaway started called Big Heart, Little Feet, helping people to leave a small footprint on the earth. Here, Pat helps organize a river cleanup, partnering with oars and local volunteers. You know, our human footprint is really large. And unfortunately, uh, we're stamping out important um, habitats and, uh, and creatures in this process. It's, it's a very uh, frightening thing. And I think that with a little more education and awareness and getting people engaged and involved in hands-on activities, 
I call these things little gateway experiences, basically. And they're a way to kind of get people out and really interested in the uh, natural world. There are more roads and big homes to travel by. We reach the Cow Common Conservation Area, where a bird hops around in a field with giant rolls of hay. Then, an aerial dance. More roads take us to Route 126 in Wayland. Old buildings and a great old beech tree with wrinkled bark. And Pelham Road takes us by a National Nature Wildlife Refuge. As we get to Herd Pond in the Great Meadows Wildlife Refuge, the sun is low in the sky, and Marilyn is a sight for sore eyes. And she has water, something I've sweated out of my system. Boy, is that good. Let me roam in the woods. Yes, that was an air conditioner they were taking care of. <laughs> you know, it's thanks to environmental bureaus like Pat Conaway that, you know, land has been preserved and, and our environment has been protected. On the fourth day of my hike, I hiked through the Willowdale State Forest, through the Cleveland Farm State Forest, up through the Georgetown Raleigh State Forest, and then along some roads in Boxford, down into the Boxford State Forest. And Boxford's where we met an amazing environmental hero, Nancy Merrill. This is an inspiring story of how a town came together to protect the environment. <coughs> they had this 46 acres on Hovey's Pond, which is a beautiful pond in West Boxford. We had been working in that area in West Foxford to protect a number of parcels. And it wasn't easy. It took commitment, an investment of time and tenacity, a relentless perseverance. And then as development came in, one of us would sit at the planning board meetings, uh, lobbying for trails through the subdivisions. Nancy Merrill has worked for many, many years leading the charge to save land for trails and open space. Today she takes us on a tour of Hovey's Pond. Saving this place became a dramatic race against time. When they finally got a, de a developer to sign on with the purchase and sale agreement, that started the, the days ticking away. The town had 120 days to come up with the money um, and then another 30 days to close the deal. This beautiful Keystone property almost became prime real estate. But generous people put their money on the line to save this jewel for the people's enjoyment. The BTA Bolt wanted to raise a lot of private donations uh, in order to help the town feel that this was a good parcel of land to protect. We raised over $500,000 in about a month's time. And the town closed the deal with another $500,000, an astronomical feat. This is a hemlock forest. Through Nancy's leadership and pioneering spirit, in the days of modern red tape and legally dotting every I and crossing every T, Boxford has saved a wonderful area for the public's recreation. Well, I think that's an amazing story. And sometimes all it takes is one environmental hero to lead the way. On day 13 of my hike, I hiked through a lot of green space, as you can see here in the Sherburn area. I started out on some roads, I hiked by a farm, through some suburban neighborhoods, and then at this long, thin corridor of green all the way down to the Rocky Narrows Reservation. And the Rocky Narrows Reservation is a spectacular place. I saw a lot of beauty along the trail. Sometimes I even felt like it was in the wilderness. But I also saw a lot of threats to the trail, not only to the trail, but to our environment. I'm concerned about the health of our forests and the ever-expanding encroachment of development into our beautiful natural places. In Sherburn, they're working really hard to keep their town green. Let's take a hike to Sherburn. We're working with the town to get some general permits to do trail maintenance work. Chris Tolman is the president of the Sherburn Forest and Trail Association, and he also moved to Sherburn for the open space. He's a civil engineer and is certified in what he calls green engineering development. It's development, it's growth, 
but it's, um, I think that is more referred to as smart growth or directed developments, where you center where you want the development and you try and preserve the open space because once the open space is gone, it's pretty much impossible to get back. This is the section of the Bay Circuit Trail within Sherburne. At Chris's computer, we get a virtual tour of the town, the trails, and all the development around Sherburne. You compare the downtown framing area and the amount of development and pavement. Compare that to the Sherburne, you can see mostly green. Uh, we can zoom in further. You can see there's still a lot of open space. Uh, you can see where the houses are and some of the bigger farms. Uh, there's a new development just across the town line into Ashland, a big residential subdivision. And although development is a huge threat to open space and forests, for Chris it's also about connecting neighborhoods and neighbors. A big piece for me is also connections between neighborhoods. I love being able to get out from my house and get to places and not have to drive. Some days I want to drive and that's great, but there's days I'd like to be able to walk to the center of town and go to CNL Frosties for an ice cream and I don't think I should have to drive to get there. So um, we're building trail connections between neighborhoods that sort of links the neighborhoods and links the open space. Cutting edge technology? Can we get from a neighborhood here to a neighborhood here through the open town property? A progressive view of what our society could be, and a return to the ageless values that seem to be imbued in our human consciousness. How do we find a way to use our resources wisely and for the common good? If you live in your house and you travel everywhere in your car, you don't really interact with folks, uh, you're in your own little world. If you walk somewhere or bike somewhere or ride a horse somewhere, you end up meeting other people out there, you end up talking to them, which means you know the people in your neighborhood better, you know the people in your community better. Through the woods. All this green, surrounded by all this tar and concrete. As I enter the Rocky Narrows Reservation, with its trails and fields, grasshoppers are flying about. A rugged climb and ledges remind me of the Appalachian Trail. Then on top of King Philip's Overlook, with an elevation of 260 feet, there are views that any wilderness would love to be compared to. Hiking out onto Route 27, I marvel at the primitive beauty of the Charles River. Two kayakers paddle peacefully. Water reflects the sights, sounds, and the feelings of a companionship with nature. Old Route 27 harkens to a simpler time. It cracks as the earth slowly regains itself. We are in Medfield now, on a hill, a large round mushroom underfoot. Now that's a mushroom. The scene, a rugged timelessness, and a black crow proclaims his right to the earth. And I am welcome back to the world of humans. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you for dropping me off, picking me up, bringing me cool drinks and cool snacks. You know, sometimes I don't think you get enough credit for all the work you do for these extra people. Now, in our next clip, we're going to have an example of what is happening and what continues to happen when we don't protect our important natural places. We enter Sudbury Conservation Land, and then Framingham Conservation Land, and squeeze through an easement between private property. This is where I'm surprised to see construction, a brand new home sprouting up in these woods, and we find others on both sides. And here, what I'm calling a million dollar view. The soil is disturbed, and it's clear we are not welcome to venture off the trail. Conservation is education, environmental education. As the Fowlers enjoy walking the conservation land just behind their backyard, they fill us in on how important environmental education is. Children that learned long ago to love the land have stood to protect it, doing whatever it takes to let nature be nature. It's bred an ethic in the community of open space protection and appreciation of nature and the connection between 
the synergy between man and, the, and nature. So that's really done a lot for the expanding the acquisition program. So back when the Earth was first seen from space, when Rachel Carson introduced the idea of a silent spring, and the first Earth Days were just being celebrated, Easton caught the fever and did something about it. Now it's, you know, 50 years, 60 years later, and uh, you see that in second and third generation, the people that come to the town meeting, and when the issues have to do with protection of open space, that's an inner bred thing people remember. Oh yeah, I went to Sheep Pasture camp, summer camp down at Wheaton Farm, and I remember how special that was to me. The fathers were really excited to show us all the conservation land that their town of Easton has been able to protect. And as uh, we have a map here that shows the parcels. The browns are state parks, but the greens and the blues, those are all conservation parcels that the town of Easton has managed to protect. And as Jim Fowler said in the last video, Easton has bred an ethic through environmental education. Investing in the future is teaching the children. Jen Cummings tells us why. We teach about all different forms of environmental awareness and education. Our teachers really specialize in working with the natural world and giving an appreciation of what the natural world gives to us and why it's important to protect it and also the animals, the resources that are in the natural world. Jen Cummings is the executive director of the Natural Resources Trust of Easton. She feeds some of the attractions here at Sheep's Pasture. This is just one of NRT's many parcels of land preserving open space rustic landscapes, and the educational opportunities that the outdoors has offered countless generations of children. When we're working with children, we're really working for the future, because if we can interest children in the natural world, it's so important, because in the future, we need people to continue to be interested and invested in protecting the natural world and the environment. The Bay Circuit Trail is our gateway back to nature, but we have to use the gate. Richard Liu wrote a book, Last Child in the Woods. He says that most of the children in our society have a disorder, NDD, Nature Deficit Disorder. And I quote Richard Liu from his book, Last Child in the Woods. Lacking direct experience with nature, children begin to associate it with fear and apocalypse, not joy and wonder. Now, I didn't see many families along the trail, but one experience I did have was off in the distance, I heard these squeals of joy and laughter. And then all of a sudden, these two little children go running by me, and they're looking at everything. They're so excited. And standing behind them with big smiles on their face were their parents, because they were feeling that same joy and wonder. So we have this great trail, this gateway back to nature. We need to help to get more people back out on the trails, adults and especially children, so that they can learn how to keep our planet in the next clip, we're going to see how the Appalachian Mountain Club is improving the trail. There are several roads to walk down. Right. Where is the trail? It says to turn left. This one here. Then at Round Table Road, I encounter one of the biggest navigational challenges of yeah. my hike. I'm going to guess that not too many people have come down this trail, because right in front of me is this giant spider web right in the middle of the trail. Hard to believe in this small section of woods, I feel like I'm getting lost. The blaze told me to go straight ahead now. It's hard to tell if this is really a trail. Doesn't look like it. I think I could get lost in here. It becomes a bit of a bushwhack. Okay, I'm back on the trail. Let's see if it can uh, pan out for me. This is a really tough trail to follow. Really tough. And I struggle to find my way to Old Pond. Little did I know that nearly a year later, I'd be documenting a trail crew that is making this trail much easier to navigate.
EMC has become a leading partner of the Bay Circuit Alliance and with that have brought our long history of uh, engaging volunteers in the stewardship of trails to uh, train them in those skills so they're confident and competent in uh, keeping the trail sustainable so that they're there and inviting and appealing for all sorts of users. The Bay Circuit Trails like logo, uh, tag, this is going to go up um, possibly right across the road there. On a day of service, Blue Cross Blue Shield employees are trained by the AMC in preparation to improve this section of trail. But there are all kinds of different people and reasons to get involved. By becoming involved in trail work, people often graduate to that level by saying, I've been hiking these trails for forever and I want to get involved. Or maybe they like building and like doing hard labor and that's kind of with trail work. You're getting out, you're getting dirty and you're working hard, um, but by doing that you're forging a new relationship and new connections with the place and giving back to the community for um, our neighbors, our friends from other states who are coming to hike the Bay Circuit Trail. We have one more video clip for you, and it really doesn't need an explanation except to say that we desperately need more environmental heroes. The plants, the animals, the earth needs more environmental heroes. And we need more stories about environmental heroes. That's why Marilyn and I are doing this work in the Al, because we believe that the more people who see stories about environmental heroes, the more people are going to want to become environmental heroes. The Bay Circuit Trail. All trails, really, could be our gateway back to nature. The Bay Circuit Trail is our golden opportunity. Bye. Have a nice hike. Marilyn has been behind the scenes, and as a person whose glass is half full, she was instrumental in keeping this video positive keeping me from sermonizing and preaching about the dark side of the human impacts we have perpetrated on this planet. Marilyn reflects on the memories that she takes away from this experience. We talk to a lot of people along the trail, so I get to meet a lot of people, hear a lot of stories, find out a lot about what people are doing. And for me, this one is particularly important because I'm a big proponent of knowing what we have in our own backyards. And what a backyard it is. 37 communities of trails, woods, forests, rivers, and streams. Bogs, wetlands, ponds, and all the insects, the birds, and the animals. And within this journey, we have uncovered a true and noble side of human nature, people at their best. We discovered that we have some gems and some treasures and a lot of people that are out there protecting what we have and procuring more of the open space that is still available and saving it so that we have it for future generations. We have mined our backyards for heroes, not from the past, but alive and living now, doing the unsung work that will only be noticed more and more as the years peel by. The Bay Circuit Trail could have perished our little backyard could have been endless chains of development. But they courageously fought on, and that is why we have this treasure. It's a real gem. We have something really incredible, and it crosses 200 miles of our own state. And a lot of people, I know I'm repeating myself, but a lot of people have gone to a lot of work, um, spending some of them a good chunk of their lives working on this. We produced this video to find environmental heroes, people taking action to care for the earth. The bay is nearly silent as a cold, damp chill is accompanied by drops of rain. Deep red and a lifeless color infiltrates the green. There were fields of flowers then and a birdhouse waiting for a tenant. A hawk searched in the sky for something to eat. It was a beautiful sight. Finally, we walked the last few feet of an amazing achievement 
a 200-mile trail kept alive by sheer guts and determination. Together, our glass is full. There is always hope. This has been a tale about the keepers of the flame, those who chose to do battle with apathy and neglect. We hope that this is a tale of a great awakening. This is a tale of a 200 mile trail. And all of the heroes called to the cause we're taking a walk We're living the talk Paying respect To the swamps and bogs The Bay Circuit Trail The Bay Circuit Trail. Tonight we've shared with you some clips from the Bay Circuit Trail videos. And you can see them in their entirety on our website, e-awakening.com. When you go onto the website and go onto the Bay Circuit Trail page, you'll see 22 separate videos. So say you were interested in hiking in the Concord area. Find the day that has Concord listed underneath it. And if you watch that video, you'll get a good idea of what your hike is going to be like. And we do have business cards on the table at the back, and they do have our website address on them. And I'd like to tell you about some other aids that are available to you for hiking the Bay Circuit Trail. One is AMC's Interactive Map. And this can be found on the website, baycircuit.org. And also on the website, baycircuit.org, they have maps that you can print out. And something that Dan found very helpful in his hike were the descriptions. And those can also be printed from that same website. Now, Dan is, uh, would like to close this portion of our presentation with another song. And it happens to be one that is one of my favorites. And I feel it puts into music what we saw in the last video, and it's called One. Thank you, Marilyn. It's not so much about who we are. more about who we become in the face of the storm we find some peace like the eye in the middle we become one we find our trail a quiet path Reflects the magnitude We cannot fail Let's do the math In the many there is solitude The trails are our gateway Back to Mother Earth we can learn to fix her, make her what she's worth. The children are the future, they are what we teach. Let's show them a brand new world that's within their reach. Let's get out on the trails and feel the joy Earth's community Trees, rocks, flowers and soil Let's join the adventure crew On the Bay Circuit Trail When we come together We 
cannot fail. We cannot fail when we come together as one. We'd like to thank the Wayland Library for having us here tonight to do our presentation. And Courtney has been a big help. And we have a, a set of DVDs for the library, so the patrons here will be able to check them out and uh, view the segment thank you so at much. their leisure. Thank you for all your help. Yeah, Courtney. thank you. Thank you much. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd like to thank all of you environmental heroes who came out for the presentation tonight. And we have Joel, who is here from the Western Forest, Forest Trail and Trail Association, which is right next door to Wayland. And um, he's going to be able to tell us a little bit about the trails uh, right here next door. Let's go. Joel. Please. Here's Joel. So a bunch of people who are foresight started to um, acquire land. That era is over for Weston. I should say, by the way, for those of you who don't exactly know where Weston is, if you go out on a brand new rail trail, we had the ribbon cutting ceremony just a couple weeks ago on uh, October 19th, and you walk east toward Boston in one mile, you hit Weston. That is actually a section of the Brady Circuit Trail now, one of the alternative paths. If you go another quarter mile, the trail will take a left, a right angle turn up north. That's the Bay Circuit Trail as it goes through Jericho Forest, Ogilvy Forest, crosses into Lincoln, Drumlin Farm, continue up by Codman Farm, continue up, I think Carlisle is next, and on north. So we're right next to a section of the Bay Circuit Trail, which as I said, one is one branch of it goes east into west. But anyway, the, the era of acquiring land, at least in Weston, I think, is pretty much over. The last big hunk of land that came up is about a year ago called Carter Farm. It was a nice piece, 40 acres, about uh, two-thirds of it, three-quarters of it wetland. Going price was $17 million. And I mean, the woman in Boxborough talked about raising a million to buy land. We just don't have that money. It's very difficult to get that sort of money. I mean, land, I think, in Weston now is going for half a million to a million an acre, which is probably half of that is meat. <laughs> so, you know, to have the resources to buy land in areas like Wayland or Weston or Concord or that is really pretty difficult. So what does that mean for us? Our approach now is connectivity, trails, just as you said, the idea of connecting, you know, anybody with anybody else in the town through walkable that would, uh, in working with the zoning boards, working with any new development housing, trying to get easements, which is not easy as, as I'm sure to anyone new. Uh, and that's really been our focus. We're so excited now to have the Bay Circuit Trail going through Weston. That was just about a year ago. The signs went up uh, through Weston, and now we can uh, be part of that 37, maybe we're the 37th, I don't know, we're <laughs> part of that community. But now the uh, trail finally goes through Weston. I'm here really to answer any questions. Any questions about Weston, trails in Weston, Weston Forest and Trail? Yes. What is that um, parking lot uh, Route 117 near um, Stratton, Jerry Road. Joy? Uh, a little further than that, yeah. which is, yes. Oh, boy, is that There's a loop there? controversial? Mm -hmm. uh, very controversial. There are some trails back there. Yes, beautiful trails. It's called 80 Acres Cat Rock. It was a very popular dog walk in the area because it was a pond people could, the dogs could swim in, called Hobbs Pond. Uh, the neighbors on Drabington Road, which is I think what you're talking about, but the parking lot at the end of Drabington Road. I think you mean Harrington. I think you mean Harrington on the, on the, you can see it on the Harrington 17. Road. No, no, Harrington, the Harrington, um, oh, 
that's yeah. Lincoln. Yeah. That's Lincoln. Oh, but that's I think that's where he made his oh, that's, that is a beautiful, that's, I love that area too. There used to be an old fudge shop there. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And yes. <laughs> you know, I'm so sad I never bought fudge there. It was, you yeah, know, it's gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, sh- yeah, I was okay we, not we drove by for years and all we yeah. could was go in and eat fudge. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't feel so bad. Now, <laughs> but I love those trails. I thought you meant a very controversial thing I'm somewhat embarrassed about. So good, I don't have to talk about it now. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, no, what's happening at Cat Rock? Now? Uh, Cat Rock is uh, it's still open. It's still for dogs, still walking. But the neighbors on Drabington Way, which is, sorry, I thought you were talking about that, were very upset with the number of cars and dogs. And so they wanted resident only on weekends. That's not us. That's not to, the way. To drive down Barrington? To park there. To park is only resident You can still only. park at that little parking garage? It's resident only on weekends. Oh, that was in the past. Oh. Sorry to say. Yeah. Uh, and as I said, that's not us, but we often get the uh, flack for <laughs> uh, that parking lot. Thank you so much, okay. Joel. Thank you. So, thank you so much. That was great. That was great. I don't have your name. Uh, I'm Jennifer Steele. Jennifer, and can you come up here, please? Me, right? Um, yeah, I actually. Jennifer. So I'm 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 just a spectator. To, um, but I so I, I live in Wayland. I uh, grew up in Wayland, uh, but I work as the senior environmental planner for the city of Newton, and we're involved um, through through my office w- is is involved with a lot of tra- trails work. And as Joel was saying, um, issues of connectivity are, are really where the focus is now because land new land access is so challenging. Um, but in, in Newton, we're, we're working to develop not only new recreational trail potentials, but uh, potential, but also um, really expand bicycle and pedestrian access for commuting purposes to, in, a, in an effort to um, ease pressure on our, on our roads and connect neighborhoods and, and so on. So we've got a lot of very exciting projects going on. Um, <coughs> tuned into this one than I am, but uh, the Route 30 corridor is getting redeveloped with a uh, protected bike lane. Uh, not Well, not, not protected, but a designated, dedicated bike lane um, all the way through all of West Finland and um, into Newton, around Newton. And Newton on Route 30, some of you may be familiar with the carriage lane that's actually going to get expanded into in where it, it's not actually an active, uh, sort of passive carriage lane, and that's going to be reactivated as a pedestrian space near, near the river, near um, new trails going north and south. Um, so just a, there's, there's just a lot of activity, and it's, it's getting very exciting. So it's not part of the big survey effort, but um, all in the same great cause. And you said maybe. <laughs> okay. Wait, oh. yeah, please. I can't resist saying this. The Bay Circuit Trail is hosted by 30... Surreptitiously, that I take the credit for have been added. <laughs> <laughs> Some have been added legally by vote, where the town uh, legislator has proposed that it be added. That's the town of Hudson officially. Uh, my point here is yes, realistically, there are areas where land values are so high that it's hard to protect them again. But there are many more communities where uh, there are many opportunities if these towns had access to the expertise of a new or a way or a west end. And so my dream is that we're talking about a corridor of 57 towns and it don't lose hope in those towns. And if you're a town that is losing hope, be ready to help these towns. And even in, in Weston, we're in a very densely populated area of Boston, and there are many different ways of, of protecting land. Uh, and I, I, I'm not proposing that you're remiss in Weston. I, I, I understand. Uh, but there are so many different ways in, in, that you can protect small pieces, and we're not dealing with pieces because the towns don't have the know-how. Now we have it. 
example of how hard it is to keep up with Al French because he is just a dynamo of, of passion and ideas. Jennifer, I, would say, I would say, if, if, I, if I might, just while oh, oh, I've got the yep. spotlight, quite literally, um, uh, that uh, just, a, just a couple of thoughts. One, one is that um, the dedication of conservation restrictions or other, other deeds of land rights are a very important way that municipalities can, um, can permanently protect land without having to purchase them outright. And so working, if you, know, if you have friends who are land holders um, or can work with local land trusts um, to, engage, uh, to engage landowners in, in the protection of land through, through conservation restrictions, deed restrictions, the, the provision of access easements, that's really important. And these municipalities that aren't directly on the Bay Circuit Corridor are still critical gateways and access points into the Bay Circuit Corridor. And I just, I want to make a plug for two different resources, uh, mapping resources. You mentioned the AMC interactive map. Um, All Trails is a fabulous free app that shows you where you are on the earth and has a wonderful, um, uh, wonderful, uh, complete, relatively complete listing of mapping of all of the local trails through private, through um, municipal conservation land, state conservation land, and, and so on. Um, uh, and the MAPC landline mapping effort shows different um, uh, different types of trails, pedestrian trails, bicycle trails, multi-use paths, and so on. Um, and that's a wonderful, a complete compendium of, of recreation and commuting opportunities out there. So two really good resources to, to use. Jennifer, you said your name is? Jennifer. Jennifer? No. <laughs> Steel. Jennifer Steele. Jennifer yeah. Steele. And um, how can people get in more information from what you were talking about? Do you have a website or something? Um, like the no. I, oh, oh the, so, well, the, the, so the, the two the apps. That, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 the two apps are, are all, um, all trails and, and then MAPC, that's the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission, Planning Council, sorry, um, which, is, which is the regional um, regional. Planning, planning agency, so MAPC landline map, and if you just Google that, you'll get to their to their live link. Thank it's you. It's a wonderful desktop or, or mobile device um, uh, uh, possibility. Thank you, Jennifer. Sure. Um, I'm just thinking how I can get you and Al connected. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's getting a little twinkle in his eye as you talk. Um, I also want to introduce you to Gary Riggett. Gary Riggett is here from Walpole. We uh, interviewed him. He was one of our environmental heroes. And uh, Gary, I know you've done some really amazing things in Walpole. Do you mind coming up and just telling people a little bit about what you've been able to accomplish in Walpole? Well, I'm the chairman of the Walpole Trails Committee. And the Trails Committee actually owes its existence to the Bay Circuit Trail. So when the Bay Circuit was um, trying to route its uh, Issues of routing were kind of settled, the path through Walpole became pretty clear. Uh, the next issue was who's going to maintain this thing going forward. So the Conservation <coughs> Commission actually spun off the Trails Committee. That was in 1998, and um, I don't even know when the 21st anniversary. Um, so what we've been doing recently. acres on one side of a wetland, bisected by a swampy wetland, and then uh, what's now called the Jarvis Farm property, which is a little bit over 100 acres. So I had the idea to link those two properties, and um, I kind of needed to bring that to fruition. So Beth Gula, who you may remember from the presentation, uh, I had met her through Bay Circuit planning meetings, and um, brought her, invited her down looked at a couple of possible crossing locations for a link that both walk on. And she said, I think you've got a couple good choices here. And then she put me in touch with 
person named Bob Gassell, who's probably a, a pal of yours. <laughs> so um, she said, you want to talk to Bob, Le <coughs> Bob Gassell from the North Andover Trails Committee. Andover. He, huh? Andover. Okay, Andover Trails Committee. They had recently built a thousand foot long boardwalk for a wetland to take the Bay Circuit off of roads and put it in a more natural corridor. So with two pals from Walpole, we went up and visited Bob one day. I remember it was in December, it had recently snowed, and uh, we spent the morning with him. So insightful. Bob had developed a novel way to construct a boardwalk using uh, screw augers. So if you have a house on a lake or pond or something, and you don't have a dock for your boat or canoe or whatever, you would screw an auger into the sand or the muck to provide a stable anchor. What's interesting about that is that it gets you away from using um, pressure treated lumber, which you would have to drive through the muck. Uh, it's not everybody is, is uh, looks favorably upon um, heat being in contact with water. And um, the screw augers, so they're min minimally invasive, they're cheap, and they're really easy to install. Relative. It, it, it takes some effort. Um, anyways. The reason I'm glad you brought me up, Dan, is that um, I've been in contact with uh, Chris Van Sykes, who's the manager of the, I think she may have taken over for you. Yeah, yeah so she's now the chief of the Bay Circuit Trail. Um, we've been in touch for years because there's a shortage of overnighting opportunities along the Bay Circuit. So Walpole has the Bay Circuit Trail to the property formerly of the Sharon County Bay Camp. Sharon County Bay Camp has 22 outbuildings. Um, and we've begun discussions with the entity that now manages this. It's the Wumble uh, Water and Sewer Commission. Um, we began discussions last year about using one of the uh, one of the buildings. It's about half the size of this room. It's, it's one of the bigger sheds on that property. So. Trail committee member is also a member of the uh, Sewer and Water Commission. He's a great connection to that body. Um, the initial discussions have gone pretty well. We look forward to offering overnighting possibilities in Walpole and one of these sheds um, to have electricity and drinking water and access to our fresh water. So look for that. <laughs> the Bay Circuit Trail. Thank you. And, you know, it's, what's interesting is that. Existence for the Bay Circuit Trail that through work helped me connect with other people, uh, with the bureaus that now our boardwalk is completed. It was funded by a, uh, a DCR grant, and I had never written a grant, 32 pages long, um, and, and I used um, yours as a template. Thank you. <laughs> All right. so, thank, thank you, Gary Riggett. Jennifer for coming up, and thank you, Noel. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming up. I mean, if you go to our uh, our series, there's one with Walpole, and you'll see Gary's bright orange shirt where he shows off Walpole trails. <laughs> so, um, you know, really, where are we at? Uh, if anybody has any questions, um, Dan, Al, or I would be happy to answer them. And, yeah, um, if, unless there's somebody else here who has some great story about what you've been able to do with your trails. Um, I, I do have one question uh, mm -hmm. for the people that told us about the trails. Is there anything available in your town, and where would people go to find out about the trails in either Weston or in Newton? Um, the Delivery Conservation Office has trail maps for each parcel. Okay. And, uh, and, and they'll give you indications of what portions of this are. The Wayland's Conservation Office yeah. has um, maps and, and trails with information about trails. Yeah, you know, I mean, we just uh, saw a good example of how networking and working together, uh, kind of what Al's talking about is the Gateway Project. That we, you know, we have 37 communities, actually 57 communities that are all part of this wonderful connection 
and you know, instead of us being entities un unto ourselves, maybe we can you know, start to expand out to each other and, and, and help each other with our expertise and things. Because there's so much land out there that can be saved. And um, there's a lot of poor towns like Colebrook, Massachusetts, where they lo um, lost part of their town forest because they needed the money so desperately. And it was, it was sick because um, it was bought by a developer for $150,000 of 28 acres of town forest. So, I mean, uh, that was a hard time for us. Uh, um, yeah, as Marilyn said, are there any questions? You mentioned uh, lack of kids, and you mentioned a book last child was. I was sort of noticed that, too. Any thoughts about how to get more kids out in the woods? Re re really, you know, that's what we really need to do is we need to get the kids back out into nature, you know, and away from their, their computers and their iPods because, I mean, I can look at nature on an iPod and it's not the same thing. I mean, you, you don't get the same feeling. You don't get that euphoria that, that nature brings to you. So my involvement in the Walter Coast movement came from the early 1970s, when kids were yeah. listening to French and Walter Coast. The local um, recreation department had a program called Cakes for Dice. Uh, and it was really, it was, it was a brilliant idea because it was geared for kids like three to five or so before they get hooked into organized sports. Uh, it was also well suited for newcomers to town, so it was, it was a build of different uh, natural areas in town. And um, for young kids, one of the best things you can do is um, take them out hiking and have a snack. Because <laughs> like, just a snack, something out of their backpack is, is so appraising to kids in town. It lures them to town. So, Even try, and if you're lucky, but the people get really are proud of these groups of young mothers. And if you can get them on board, and they're, they're not going to be immediately on board, but if you get to them, at least that's what we're going to try. There are at least three organizations, and as long as we don't get in a maelstrom where we're, we're competing with each other, I don't know, but there's and over moms, and over mums, and, and, and they. That's my suggestion. Yeah, there's a mother's out front too. And they, out front. they have clout. Yeah. yeah. That's a great uh, that's a great idea. And, and you wanted to ask a question or, or say something. So you mentioned the hikes like, for kids, is it the the parents and the child? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. I think that was important. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, there was no quarry requirement when I came out here. <laughs> and now I'm aware of it. So those are ways that I can benefit from it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's tough because you know there's so many um, boundaries for us getting back to nature, and you think about it, 200 years ago, uh, we were, we're in nature's people, and now here, we're all of a sudden, we're divorced from nature, you know, yeah. we've had a divorce from nature, <laughs> so, um, you know, I think, you know, that question is really key, and I think that our educational systems really could bring, uh, you know, I've talked to so many people about that, you know, the idea of uh, getting nature back into the schools, and, so one recent issue that has come up in Walter is that uh, there seems to be a lot of half-day Fridays, and the, uh, the, the uh, businesses in Walter spend their sort of end of the week like entertaining those who aren't like the kids. And I don't know how it got to Glenn Detroit committee members, but Glenn, my, uh, Glenn took the idea of all these kids in Walter Center on half-days and brought it back to one of the middle schools 
goes back to, um, to Al's Gateway Project, Grace, Al's the grassroots guy. And really, I mean, it has to come from the grassroots that, that um, people are willing, like Gary, to take a hike and types responsibility on. And, uh, you know, I don't know how we inspire more people to uh, really do that. Al said, we've done 41 uh, presentations, and I figured out that we probably have reached about 840 people with our presentations, and we're hoping that some of this, uh, you know, like inspiration is rubbing off, and, and people are starting to get excited about the possibilities, so um, I think that the energy that's in this room right now is, is, is tremendous, and, and really, um, where do we go from here, you know, and that's what we're trying to figure out with the Gateway Project next the evolution of, of our presentation is, is how do we cr create a grassroots initiative where it isn't really structured and it isn't from the top down but it's it's something that just catches on just 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 goes from one person to the other and, and then grows you know gets from roots and grows so that's what we're trying to do Mel and I now is to inspire people to, to think about these things and, and Hopefully, to have more things happen, and Gary and all the people that are involved, you know, and, and you, Jennifer, um, uh, you know, it's it's tremendous what you guys are doing, and, and we're, you know, I'm sure everybody else here is, is, is getting involved. Do you guys have QR codes associated with your Insta that and those? Somebody has a really important question to ask. Um, but we are going to be packing up, and we're going to be here for the next 20 minutes or so, packing up. So if there's anybody that wants to talk to us, um, 
one on one. But just really, I, I mean, it's been a, a real pleasure to be with you guys. Um, you've been a great audience and, and real great experience that I've had. Thank you so much. Thank you.